Yes, that's right. I know you've heard people use the term provisional patent. There are a lot of articles that use that term. I've even seen books where the title includes provisional patents, but provisional patents do not exist. And it is essential that you understand why they don't exist and why you shouldn't use this term because it's not just something that's a, kind of a small deal. It's something that I have seen a lot of times in my practice that has derailed deals with investors and gotten people accused of fraud. So stick around. I'm gonna tell you why that is, how to avoid those pitfalls and make sure that your business and your product is gonna be a success just by knowing that provisional patents don't exist. So you may have heard the term provisional thrown around when it comes to patents. And what does exist is a provisional patent application. And that is totally different than a provisional patent, which does not exist. Now you might think, whatever, it's, it's a small difference, but it's one that is absolutely critical. And again, one that I'm going to explain why I've seen it derail really important deals. Yeah. So it's important to understand the, the patent process to kind of get some context here. So a provisional patent application, it is just a placeholder. It only lasts for 12 months. It automatically expires at the end of 12 months. So a provisional patent application can never mature into a patent. That is just not possible. It always expires. Okay. So the term provisional patent is just nonsensical. Okay. So what you have to do when that provisional application expires, or at least before it expires, you have to file a non-provisional patent application. And this is the application that will actually potentially mature into an issued patent. But even when you file this non-provisional patent application, you still don't have a patent. You have a non-provisional patent application. Okay, so this non-provisional patent application waits in line at the United States Patent Trademark Office for one to three years before examination begins. And that begins a negotiation with the patent examiner, um, which hopefully will result in the application being allowed. And keep in mind, during this examination process, you still don't have a patent either. It is still patent pending. It is a pending non-provisional application. Okay, so hopefully at some point, the examiner is convinced that what you have claimed is new and non-obvious, will send a notice of allowance, you pay an issue fee, and then the non-provisional application will issue as a patent. That is the only time that you have something that you can call a patent. Now, what you're probably gonna say is, Dylan, look, okay, yeah, we have a provisional patent and it's, you know, it's something that is setting us up for later on, we're gonna be able to get a patent. Why can't we just call it a provisional patent? People know what we're talking about. No, they don't. And that's the problem. And especially investors, a lot of times it's especially when you start using the shorthand, you say, oh, we have a provisional patent and that gets shortened to, we have a patent. And then the marketing people, they put it in their marketing materials and say, oh, you know, our patented technology. Okay. So one, it's actually a federal crime to label something as being patented um, w w when it's not. So at worst, it can be fraud, okay? You know, in the best case scenario, it's something that could be perceived as fraud by say like investors and other people doing due diligence. And it automatically puts you on the defense that I've seen this with a lot of clients where people, you know, start using the, the terminology, oh, we have, we have a provisional patent or we, we have a patent. And what the investors hear is, you have patented technology. And in their mind, it's like, oh, you've gone through the examination process, it's been allowed, you've paid the issue fee, you have an, an enforceable patent, which is not the case. They do their due diligence and they say, wait, what? You've, you've been saying all along that you have a patent or you have patents. You just filed provisional patent applications or you even filed non-provisional patent applications. What are you talking about? You know, sometimes it's like, well, you don't even understand the patent process. Why would we want to invest in you? Or you were trying to defraud us. You were trying to act like you have issued patents. We don't want to work with you. I've seen some cases where clients have lost details because the investors don't trust them. They're like, we think that you were trying to actually defraud us and trying to act like you had patent assets, or at the very least, like we don't trust that you understand this whole patent thing. We don't want to work with you. Uh, you know, sometimes they're able to salvage a deal and they kind of back like, okay, I, you know, we, 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 you know, we never meant to say that, you know, we, we kind of, you know, miss, uh, misspoke, um, you know, we have pending patent applications and they can sort of change the narrative and salvage the deal. But you know, that tr distrust is not a good thing and is something that kind of then perpetuates through these relationships. So it's not just a simple thing of like, oh, you know, people know what we mean when we say provisional patent. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It ends up being a huge deal a lot of times. So don't ever use the term provisional patent 
say, provisional patent application. And even for, at the non-provisional stage, when you file the non-provisional, it's not until it's allowed and you pay the issue fee that your non-provisional application will actually be an issued patent. That's something that you can call a patent. Okay, so thanks for watching and like, hit the like button if uh, you got some uh, enjoyment or some value out of this video. Um, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more on patents and inventing, especially for inventors, entrepreneurs, and startups. And we will see you again in the next video. Thanks.